This is a report on the enhancements we've made to the Joystick Club's Tomahawk simulator and an update on the progress of the Seneca Sim. We've added fully functioning instruments, updated the PC and enhanced the flight controls. So what I've managed to do now is get all five instruments that I've got so far onto a single interface card um, together with some filtering. The new panel was bench tested with X-Plane 11. Having tested the instruments, the interface board was fitted. An instrument panel installed. Other maintenance work was undertaken and the low voltage electrical distribution rearranged. To enable x 11 to run, the PC has been updated with a more powerful processor and graphics card. Here we see it in action at the Farnborough Air Show. Then at RAF Odium's Family Day. It was in great demand during the Brooklyn's Museum's Aviation Day. That's perfect there. If you can hold it like that, the wing's level, the nose is starting to drop. Look, we can see more of the land, so we need to just slight back pressure. The Seneca itself is inside a barn, which is protecting it from the elements. And so far we've managed to terminate all the uh, front end cables for the main controls. So we have down here the pitch and roll. So if we do that, can you can see what's happening. So that's, that's pitch. And then roll's the other one, there's the roll. So that's now working. And across here is the um, rudder. And basically what that does is you can see what happens, the, the pot's moving round. There's two interface boxes on the wall here. This one here handles the engine instruments and all of the analog inputs from the pitch roll and yaw. And the one across the other side handles the other half of the instruments from the main panel and all the switch inputs. So all the buttons and everything that get pressed in the cockpit come out here. And these boxes are interfaced to the main flight sim computer through USB ports. So inside the cockpit we have the original panel here which has got lots of holes in it and just wasn't up to the job, it wasn't strong enough to support the new instruments we wanted to put in. So we took that panel out like that, uh, Mike Clues gave us some more aluminium and that's already cut to size so we now have a blank aluminium panel which just slots in there um, and we can put what instruments we like on it. Now I've done a trial fit already, the proposal is to fit a Garmin G600 EFIS, which is this unit here, and then three conventional instruments around the side. So, we're going to put uh, airspeed that there, artificial horizon here, and uh, altitude altimeter there, and the various um, uh, warnings and, and things will be put back in place. And the one thing I need is a real time clock to go in there just to finish it off. So that's the, the, the new instrument panels, a lot of work still to do, haven't uh, yet uh, cut much out of the back yet, but that's an ongoing project. Um, I was going to fit this Garmin G530 um, panel here, which again is partly built 
um, that slots nicely in there and that will provide all the navigation that's needed and it should be fully operational there'll be a screen in there which will display what the Garmin what you expect to see from the Garmin uh, navigator itself and all the buttons will work and they'll perform as they do on the real 530 so that's a quick progress report still a lot of work to do but we're moving in the right direction machining of the final instrument panel is underway and we hope to have the Seneca in full operation for the 2019 season. The Joystick Club is committed to providing a first-class flying experience to young people and is very grateful for all the financial support and for the many volunteers without whom none of this would have been possible. <laughs>